welcome to 2023. Thank you for joining us online today. And if you were with us at all in 2022, you know that we covered the foundation of this church family, the first love, the person of Jesus through our teaching through much of the year. We looked at a biography written by a very close friend of his named John. Now, this is only one of four biographies written in Scripture about the person of Jesus. There's another one written by a first century doctor named Luke, who also wrote a second book. Luke not only wrote his biography, but wrote a volume two. And in fact, if you open up your Bible and you read all the way through the Gospel of John, you flip to the next page, you will see Luke's second volume. It is called the book of Acts. And Luke opens the book of Acts with these words. He says, in the first book, O Theophilus, he says, I have dealt with all that Jesus, and notice this word here, began to do and teach until the day that he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles that he had chosen. It is quite interesting that Luke said, The first volume is about what Jesus began to do. The implication here is that Jesus is not finished working, that he's still working. Now the question is, how is Jesus still working? He's not walking around. We don't see him on the streets. We're not going to run into him in the markets. So how does Jesus work? The answer is really a two-part answer. Jesus works by his Holy Spirit through his people. Jesus works by the Holy Spirit. If you are brand new to all of this faith journey, the Holy Spirit is God's promised presence living in you after you accept him in your life. Jesus referenced the Holy Spirit and talked about the Holy Spirit several times in the book of John itself. In fact, in chapter 14, verse 26, he said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And what the Spirit is going to do is he's going to remind you of all the things that I taught you. In other words, the Holy Spirit is going to continually point you back to the person of Jesus. He also goes on to say, that it is actually to our advantage if Jesus, Jesus himself says this, goes away and sends the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Jesus, when he walked this earth, could be only in one place at one time. The Holy Spirit can be with you absolutely wherever you go. And finally, in one of the most astonishing verses, to me, in all of Scripture, John chapter 14 Verse 12, Jesus tells his followers, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these he will do because I am going to the Father. What Jesus says is because you and I have the Holy Spirit, if you are a Jesus follower, because you and I have the Holy Spirit, he said you are going to continue the work that I do. Now you see the work of Jesus, and Jesus continually cared for people who are seemingly on the outskirts of society. Jesus healed people. Jesus sat with people. Jesus wept with people. And Jesus says that his followers will continue that very work and will do even greater works than these. Jesus continues to work by the Holy Spirit through his people. The church in Scripture is often called the body of Christ. This, it's this imagery here that the church collectively will continue to do what Jesus did as he walked as a human being on this earth. Therefore, I love this picture of the church because as we scatter from a Sunday morning gathering and we go our various places, the church is everywhere. What this means is that his work continues wherever his people are. That God's love can go wherever his people are. When we see the person of Jesus in Scripture, we see that Jesus touched lepers. Those were people in the first century who had a skin disease and whom other people pronounced as unclean and untouchable, and they ostracized them. And inspired by Jesus, we see an early church father 
named Basil want to continue the work of Jesus. In fact, an author named John Ortberg wrote about Basil. Here's what he said. He says, in the early centuries of the church, leprosy meant isolation, uncleanness, and death. But an early church father named Basil had this idea. What if we build a place to actually love and care for lepers? They don't have to have money. They don't even have to pay for it. We will raise the money. And then his brother preached one of the most famous sermons that century. His brother named Gregory said this. He says, lepers have been made in the image of God in the same way you and I have. And perhaps, perhaps they even preserve preserve the image of God better than we do. So let us take care of Christ while there is still time. Let us minister to Christ's needs. Let us serve his people. Let us give Christ nourishment. Let us clothe Christ. Let us gather Christ in. Let us show Christ honor. And we see here in the foundation of Basil and Gregory the very first idea of what would become a hospital. Jesus continues to work. Centuries later, a friend of mine named Vital, who grew up in a small village in Rwanda, and who had family members die in the 1994 Rwandan genocide, would be cared for by a program called Compassion International, would be educated, would go on to receive his MBA and be married and have a family, and now, propelled by God's faithful provision in his life, Vital seeks to start a school in that small Rwandan village to help people the same way that he was helped. Jesus continues to work. Or even closer geographically to us right now. In 2010, a lady by the name of Bonnie Gatchel was compelled and convicted out of a desire to see absolutely everyone as equal in this world. And she was compelled to help those who are stuck in sexual exploitation, domestic violence, and those who worked in the strip clubs. So she founded something called Route One, which really seeks to help every single person on their journey who is stuck in that cycle through listening, through care, And she seeks to equip church leaders and community leaders with the resources they need to best care for those in that situation. Jesus follower Tony DeQuattro established Operation Stand Down here in Rhode Island to help end the cycle of veteran homelessness. Tony, a Marine himself, founded this organization that now offers a wide range of life-changing services, including support, permanent and transitional housing, intensive care management, assistance with food and clothing, and employment and placement services. Jesus continues to work. Sean Carew established the Providence Rescue Mission to reach the homeless and needy of Rhode Island's urban centers with the gospel of Jesus Christ, while providing physical, emotional, educational, and rehabilitative services at no expense to those in need. Jesus continues to work. And countless others, anonymous through the pages of history, undoubtedly some who are watching this right now, have sat with the broken, have listened have been present through addiction, have shouldered grief alongside of, have sacrificed for, have cared for, have fed, have clothed, have secretly given and served, all continuing the work of Jesus. The God who became flesh, lived as a peasant, and washed his disciples' feet. Jesus continues to work by the Holy Spirit through his people.
ordinary people. And as we turn the page to a brand new year, my hope is that you will come to him and open up your life. For this church is certainly better when you are a part of it.
Oh!